HIV. <sighs> I uh, I just don't like people. <laughs> I like you. Let's let's start this uh, hanging on <laughs> podcast off with. I don't like anyone. I hate everyone. <laughs> Welcome back to the Hanging Hunt Podcast. We are banging them out. Billy's let's making crank, sure the recording. Let's crank this up. Let's, yeah, but let's. Um, well, we were we were too hot fire on the last one. Was it? Because when I listened back, I, I had was to turn like, it way down. Oh, did you? It was no bueno. Oh, because was... I can give you a little more juice. You want some more juice? Talk to me. Hello, hello. Hey, how you doing? I I may a little, not a more. I may not be able to actually hear this myself because yeah. my uh, my ear is like totally aft. You sound good to me. What happened to your ear? So, remember how on the last podcast we talked about how we had COVID, the vid uh, from the ATA show, allegedly. Well, I came home, wasn't sick. I was good to go. I've already had it so many times. That, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> so I. Uh, I was good, and then I, I started to get an earache last Friday. Is that better? Hey. Now you're good. Now I'm good. So I started to get an earache last Friday, and Saturday I couldn't hear out of my left ear at all. And Sunday I'm like, whoa, it's getting worse, and it's like super painful. Did you have a ringing, or it was just totally No, it's like gone. Like my wife has one of those ear looker inners. That's the technical term. And she looked at it and went, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh, <laughs> it's not supposed to look like that. So I couldn't get, a, um, couldn't get an appointment with my primary care, so I went to an urgent care. And the doctor looked at my right ear and was like, okay, okay. And then as soon as he like, looked near my left ear, he went, oh, that's not happy. <laughs> I went, oh, my gosh, yeah. He was like, yeah, you definitely have an outer and middle ear infection. And we're um, going to have to cut it off. Yeah, it's amputate, <laughs> you know. Let me just sh- put a bullet in it. And so, long story short, he s- asks me if all the, you know, symptoms and questions and things like that. And he says, um, you're not sick and everything, but have you been exposed to COVID in the past two weeks? I went, well, well, yeah. I sat face to face with my homie for a couple <laughs> hours. <laughs> <laughs> Slept Spinning. in the same hotel room. <laughs> Uh, and he was like, well, you know, the congestion from COVID and things like that, even if, you know, you may not have gotten Just sick in your and ear. you tested negative, he said, you probably got this because of COVID. I was like, oh, awesome. Allegedly. Allegedly, <laughs> right? Yeah, so um, I've been on a Z-Pack and eardrops for today's the fourth day. Uh, Z-Packs are awesome. Yeah, zero improvement. <laughs> Zero improvement. Like right now, my ears throbbing. Dude, are you? Do you have a high pitch ringing in it? No, no. It's it's that clogged. <laughs> I can't hear anything. So, um, you might remember this, but a couple last year, last September, I went to Kentucky and hunted with the first like guys, captured guys. Mm-hmm. So it was Jordan Hunter. Uh, Greg Farrell from First Light, myself, we filmed the thing. Greg shot a buck, Velvet. It was awesome. We came back, and that was a great kind of like. It was when. The trip was almost canceled because of COVID, but we were kind of like, eh, we're good. Like, we want to hunt, whatever. And we, the accommodations, we ended up sleeping in this like dude's carport. It was 100 degrees during the day. <laughs> it was miserable. We're like living out of the First Light trailer. Um, and so we all got back, and we all were like, I wasn't feeling very good. I kind of had actually. I I got back on like a Wednesday, and then I played in our go, a golf tournament with our buddy uh, Pegasus mm-hmm. Nick Gates, <laughs> and um, yeah, there's a lot of drinking, and I was just like, I did not feel good. On Monday, I took my daughter to school. I came home, I laid down on the couch, and I was like, I am dying. I felt awful. I was achy. I hurt. My wife took my temperature, and it was like 104. She's like, <laughs> I knew you were going to get COVID. Like, blah, 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 blah. And uh, that's all. I just see a Tasmanian devil that stomps through the house angrily. <laughs> that's it's just a good picture of her. Billy's here again. God damn it. Son of a bitch. Motherfucker. Um, and so she's like, I knew you had COVID, blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, I don't feel good. And I, like, shut down. Mm-hmm. So l- long story short, it was like a week to 10 days of the worst fever of my life i kept getting tested for covid i kept testing negative for covid Mm -hmm. i kept telling and everybody on this trip got sick and we're all texting each other like who's got what anybody got any leads like what is it and we all had the same symptoms and the guys 
the other guys were like getting results faster. My doctor kept telling me, he's like, oh, it's COVID. It's just getting a false negative. And I'm like, dude, I was covered in ticks. Like, I, I, I'm, I, this might be something else. You know, and Hunter, the rude boy, got, he tested positive for like anaplasmosis. And I'm like, dude, doctor, please give me something for tick borne illnesses, mm-hmm. doxycycline, right? Mm-hmm. And so finally, it was, I went to the doctor on a Friday. Meanwhile, I'm getting trail camera pictures of like my number one target buck lollygagging in front of a prep tree. And that Saturday, we had the teaching train event that you and I were hosting, and you're yes. like, I'm ah, sorry, I just can't make it. Yeah, I try. I came. You came, and you were like, I want to die right yeah. now. I was like, get out of here, Rona boy. Because I was like, no way. He definitely has coronavirus. And he, he came to my house with, there's like 75 people there. Good job. Yeah, I, I was like delusional. My fever yeah. was so high, I didn't know what was going on. I mean, it was it was bad, mm-hmm. and um, so fast forward. I'm like, I gotta go shoot this buck. Like, I can't not shoot this buck. Like four days in a row, he's in front of this tree, and so I climbed up in the tree, and I'm sitting there, and the sun comes up, and all of a sudden, my left ear just goes, mm. and I all I hear is, and, and it I'm, wasn't a mosquito. And I was like, uh oh, like <laughs> that's not good, right? So. Um, I can sympathize with you. It felt I could feel the pressure in there. Yeah. But I would like try to close my nose and blow. And I bought this like air popper thing. Uh, it's called a Eustachy. And mm-hmm. it's like a little air pump. You put it in your nose, you clog your other nose, and you pump it up. Dude, that thing, it would not work. And like, it wouldn't it, clear the Eustachy. My face would just like puff out. Oh, like the air would just blow up. And so I went to a doctor. This was kind of funny. Um, so I went to a doctor and. You know, they, they test my hearing, and you get this hearing graph, right? And it shows you, like, what you can hear. And it's like, your right ear is, like, normal. My left ear was, like, nothing. Flat line. Yeah. They're, they're like, you know, put your hand up when you hear the noise. And I'm like, you guys playing a noise? <laughs> when are you going to start? And they're like, like, we're finished. Yeah. You're like, okay, you're, you're screwed. Um, and so I remember the doctor came in, and she was like, yeah, ask me questions. And she's like, well, sometimes this just happens. I was like, sometimes people just go deaf? Like, what do you mean? My you know? ear just closes? Yeah. I'm like, you know, there's, I can feel pressure there. Um, and she's like, yeah, sometimes it happens. And I explained to her that, you know, like, what about, like, tick-borne illnesses and, and here, whatever. And uh, she was just like, she, I remember, she looked at me like I was crazy. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, this is a tick person. And I was like, no, I'm, like, actively sick right now. And so she's, oh, they gave me 60 milligrams a day of this steroid to, like, Mm-hmm. beat my ear thing so this might be in your future it was awful i found myself listening to death metal like randomly wanting to rip the wheel off the car <laughs> the roid rage that i experienced roid in two rage. Weeks. About, about, uh, there were times that like um i'd be in the house and my wife would say something and i would just like i would feel like the hulk was inside of me and i had to like, be like whoa dude <laughs> calm down bro <laughs> <laughs> Pump brakes. Kids are here. Don't, don't go to jail. <laughs> don't throw her over the couch. Don't yeah. throw her over but the dude, couch. I mean, it was brutal. And, and thankfully, it's back. Um, and coincidentally, I feel like it was kind of a gift from God because that's why we had a newborn baby. And so when I would go to bed at night, I would put my good ear on the pillow. And then I'd have old deaf ear up. And I couldn't hear anything. I'd sleep like a baby. My wife would be like, I hate you. Was that before you wouldn't get up or after you wouldn't I don't get, get up, up with the baby? I, I'm, I, yeah, I'm the like heaviest sleeper on earth. Probably because of the sleep apnea and the amount of weight that I carry on top of my lungs. It could be that you're also blacked out right before you go to sleep. Too. That doesn't hurt. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I hope your uh, hope your ear gets better. Sorry for the long uh, the long dialogue about my experience, my, my journey there, but it was brutal. I'm man. hoping that I don't have permanent issues from it. But it's like. What's well, a week today? So I'm sure you'll be okay. Yeah, yeah. I posted. I've uh, never really gotten earaches. I posted a a thing on Instagram about, um, you know, topics that people want us to cover. Mm-hmm. And the first question here is from our buddy Josh: Have you fully recovered from the ATA? <laughs> no, Josh, <laughs> we haven't. Actually, right now we're just talking about my. COVID uh, relapse. I'm just here talking about COVID. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the, here's a good question. 
Should Tethered incorporate a mud flap on the saddle in case you get bubble guts? <laughs> Not in case. Yes, Tethered, please. First Light, if you're out there, give me a poop flap. You sent a picture in our Instagram chat recently of um, of my worst nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we did also get one from your wife asking who was the better hunter, Billy or Taylor. Yeah. I said definitely without a doubt me. A hundred percent. I don't always poop myself in the stand. <laughs> I have better scent control. But when I do, I blow it up. I go all in, baby. I um, I shot a deer last night. I tell you, I that. know. I shot a button buck. It was nice. You're like, I don't care what you are. You're gonna die. Yeah, you walk. You walk in front of me. You die, boy. <laughs> I know. I saw. Shot him with a crossbow too. Now, you know, people hate on crossbows, man. But for our intended purpose, like first off, this this time of year, there is no foliage on the tree at all. And any movement gets you busted because the deer are so herded up. Mm-hmm. So if you have 10, 15 deer, you have 20 to 30 eyeballs. And, and a little bit of movement, death. And let's be frank when it comes to our hunting. We're not out there for specifically for the experience of hunting no. all the time. Sometimes we just need to go in and wipe out some deer. Dude, so it doesn't really... And this exact property is a perfect example because the homeowner is like texting me all the time. They're deer here. They're deer here. Where are you? Where are you? Like, and this is a new property. Yeah. And and the, the issue with this property, you know, I'm still trying to figure it out, but this property is a little bigger than our standard property. And so there's like very much a cat and mouse game going on where it's totally flat. It's like the same habitat throughout. It's just like there are no real pinch points. There's no pinch points. And the yeah. deer are just like they don't really they just kind of wander through. And and so, you know, I'm hunting that edge. I'm hunting on the side of 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 right where there is like a difference between like brushy, high stem count, thick thicket and newly cleared area yeah because i saw the picture the video that you sent you could see where they brought a forestry mulcher in and just completely decimated the undergrowth there which will be good after we get some regeneration and some growth in there but right now they've taken out lots of trees lots of shrubs there's not much cover in there lots of stuff to suck up water also so Mm -hmm. we've had some snow recently and i felt like i was on wood duck hunt Really? It was a schlock fest getting back in there. It was <laughs> <laughs> like Nick Yates' dorm room in college. <laughs> Stirring macaroni in a pot with a shovel. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it was um it was it was gnarly getting back in there. And then actually, so So did you wear rubber boots or did you wear I had rubber boots on. <laughs> Although the reason I had rubber boots on is because that is how lazy I am. I didn't even, I'm not smart enough to think, oh, hey, I should throw rubber boots on because it's going to be muddy back there. I threw rubber boots on because I thought, well, if I, if I just step into these, that's 13 seconds. I don't have to spend tying my shoelaces. I don't have to bend over my belly. My fat gut over. <laughs> exactly. So I'm thinking, I'm really considering going to like Wellingtons. I used to hunt with Wellingtons, just slip on yeah. baits and. I just need to find some that are insulated. They come with uh, natty bows, don't they? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> natty <Bates>. bows. <laughs> Down by the shore. Uh, yeah, so, but the crossbow is like a super effective tool. And the combination for, for population control. Yes. You know, I, uh, We're not talking about, you know, finding your best hunting experience Hiking in on public land, doing all of your e scouting, going and doing your preseason scouting yeah, with your five thousand dollar crossbow. Getting the experience here. We're yeah. talking about culling deer. Yeah, schwacking. Yes. And but that crossbow is built to schwack. <laughs> yeah. Like in the combo of a saddle and a crossbow, a freaking killer. This well, time yeah. I mean, you've got a built in rest with your bridge. You can spin and turn anywhere, and really, you can shoot left or right handed. Yeah. With it, as long as you practice that. Because I'm amphibious. <laughs> but yeah it, it's super super easy and this crossbow that i was using is the 10 point it has mm-hmm. that built-in cocking mechanism mm-hmm. oh dude you don't even have to because for me with my fat gut it's a little hard to re-cock in the the, the crossbow uh-huh. in, the, in the saddle so just because i got a big 
basketball here. <laughs> but yeah, you just drop it down and crank her up, and there's like even less movement doing that. So I mean, this poor deer had no clue in the world that I existed, and I also for this time of year zero. Foliage Phenomenal. and there's no on that property. There's no evergreens. There's no hollies Nothing. you can tuck into. You're Dude, just... I was in a tree that was this big around <laughs> with this giant tree behind me trying to break up my cover. But the downside of that is if you move it all, the whole tree is like, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so oh, I that's just... a big ass squirrel. Yeah, <laughs> what's going on up there? That squirrel smells like fried chicken and bourbon. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I mean it. Um, and I was able to take a slightly quartering two shot without any issue, you know, because the way that the deer was just happened to be walking through on that edge. Um, and it, it ran 40 yards. I mean, Done. Cooked. Smash. Which broadhead did you use? I used the broadheads that they sent me with the bow. <laughs> it's, like a, it's like a 10 point. It's a two blade expandable. It's like it's, a rage knockoff, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's, it's uh, similar to a rage. It doesn't have a collar on it. Yeah. And it's it's okay. So that crossbow is like a 410 foot per second, like real 410 mm-hmm. foot per second crossbow. Um, and I mean that the bolt was so hard to find afterwards. If if I wasn't on an urban property, I wouldn't have even looked for it. Yeah, it was buried in the ground. I I don't. I just got lucky and happened to see like a tiny. I mean, like half of a fingernail worth of the fletching. On and the that ground. was it. Yeah, and and now what was interesting was. You know, we shoot, um, you know, big white fletchings on the back of our arrows because I really like to be able to have as much surface area as possible to look at the blood and be like, you know, just to more verify than anything that like the image that's burned in my mind where that arrow went is correct. Is correct. It's dipped in blood. mm -hmm. It looks good. It's got bubbles. It's pink. Um, You know, that, that white fletching can tell a lot about how you hit the deer. And I've noticed with some of these crossbow bolts that, that are, like, so fast, there's hardly any sign on the bolt. Yeah, especially when you hit them through the lungs, right? If you yeah. double lung, and it's only double lung, there's no heart, no liver, anything like that. It's just a double lung hit. Um, even with a normal compound bow, there isn't a ton of blood. And it's, I don't know, I guess because there's air, you know, in in the lungs. and But... I would imagine with a super fast crossbow like that, that there'd be even less. And a giant expandable in the front of it. Yeah. I think it's almost like creating like a shock a wound channel. Yeah, yeah. Like it's not touching anything. The fletching isn't. Yeah. 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 Well, imagine the one that um, Scott, the gear editor for Outdoor Life, they, right after ATA, he went up to Lancaster Archery yeah. and did all the bow testing. And he pulled out that crossbow that shoots over. 500 feet per second legitimately i mean look we're getting to the point where are we ever going to get to the point where we have to say well this is a supersonic i mean i feel uh, like we're getting to the point where it's i don't want to hold that next to my face jeez could you imagine 500 feet per second with a like a 420 some odd grain bolt right because it has to be it's a it's a poundage per draw Mm mm-hmm Dude, that's that's fast. Yeah, I mean, in the explosion that would happen. In fact, Josh and I were messing with him, and Josh was like, "Hey, you should dry fire it." And then a few minutes later, I didn't realize Josh sent that, and I said, "Hey, dry fire, it. <laughs> <laughs> dry fire test." He said there would be many, many, many pieces all over this floor yeah. and in my face what's, if I dry what's fired. What's funny is Scott's a traditional archer. I know like, he's really into like his recurves and stuff. Yeah, and and he, I was also messaging him and he was like this crossbow is so cool <laughs> he's like it's like a f-16 it's like, it is it, it he also said it broke during that test so <laughs> did it really yeah i don't know what happened yikes um well he probably dry fired it like we told him to <laughs> <laughs> somebody asked does your mother sew yeah <laughs> boom get it to sew that <laughs> christopher walken is best in that movie um Best top three broadheads for hunting small properties where you need a short track due to poop lines. I think that meant property lines. <laughs> Old Surrey. <laughs> <laughs> Does Android have a Surrey? Um, Google Assistant, right? Yeah, well, Google or I think it's a, 
I don't know. It depends on which one. Like I have a. That's so what do I have? So Android the note. Who makes who makes a note? Samsung. Samsung. I think they have like Bixby or something. I don't know. I don't pay attention to that. That's stupid. So dumb. Get a blue bubble. So already. the the uh, you know. I do just you use don't different like broadheads it. on different properties? Because I used to, and now I don't. After I, a conversation that we had, I don't. Um, but hunt to hunt, I have tended to switch back and forth strictly out of laziness. It's like. <laughs> Which one's sharp? Oh, these are new. <laughs> yeah, exa- that's really what happens. That's why there's a pile of unsharpened broadheads over in that corner. Yeah, I mean, I'm that's lazy. that's what happens. But, you know, like if I have no problem shooting for deer, I have no problem shooting a rage. Um, my go to right now are two slick tricks, either the mags or the grizz tricks, um, or the iron wheels that I shoot. Oh, I'm sorry, three. And I. I still do shoot the um, the day six also the wides. I like a wider one. Um, you know, I, I shot that Sika deer with that like four bladed mechanical, yeah, like the nap Spitfire cross cut. Whatever and the it chest is. cavity of that animal it's was like that deep, itty bitty, and it did not get through. I just barely poked out the other side. I'm like, oh, oh. and then I didn't tell you there was uh, a. a Buck got hit not long after that, a week or two later, and I still had those those arrows in my quiver. Yeah, didn't you like stick it? No, I, <laughs> I, <laughs> yes, I did. I stuck it. Uh, I um, ain't nothing hurt like those kidney stones. <laughs> tear my insides out. <laughs> well, I saw this buck got hit, and it's like struggling, flopping around. Its back end was cooked, right? And it was in the ditch, and I went, look. Cop pulled up, and he was like. Uh, do you got anything to take care of? I was like, you, do you mind if I just shoot it with a bow and then you take care of it? He was like, put it out of its misery right well, now. He was going to shoot it with his gun. He was going right? to shoot it with his gun. And I was like, dude, I'll shoot it with my bow right now. He was like, go for it. <laughs> Please. Yeah. I don't want to fill out any paperwork. I don't, you know. <laughs> so I zapped this deer. and From like point blank range. Oh, less than 10 yards. Yeah. And did not get a full pass through with those same broadheads. <laughs> Wonder why. Well, then that deer decides to get up on its front legs and go out into traffic. With an arrow in it? With an arrow in it. And I'm like, oh my God. Oh my God, God please. So I ran <laughs> rewind, out. Rewind. <laughs> I ran out to grab the deer and it's still alive. So it's trying to gore me. Yeah. And the cop's like, don't get too close. I'm like, F that. I grabbed it by its horns and it's fighting me at this point. And I drag it back to the to the ditch where it, I mean it only took ten seconds for it to die, but it was. Afterwards, I realized I almost got hit by a car just now. <laughs> like it was like forty five mile an hour road, and I almost got gored by a buck. Could you imagine you just like driving home from some shitty day at work? And you're like, oh, <laughs> yeah, go oh, there's a deer wife. on the road. Well, that dude's grabbing the deer. What is going on? Here? Oh my god, there's an arrow sticking <laughs> out of it. Did what he stab hell? it? Oh, thank goodness, there's a cop there. Oh no, the cop's helping him. <laughs> Yeah, I could just see it. Take him to jail. Wait, don't help him. <laughs> well, then a guy ended up coming up. Um, hey, you going to eat those loins? <laughs> um, yeah. What? He said, hey, what are you going to do with that deer? Uh, you want it? He was like, I'll take it. I said, make sure you tag it. He said, I got it. And he tagged it and rolled out with it. Left with it. I said, oh. And the cop and I are sitting there like, sweet, that was easy. Yeah, we almost died, but that was pretty easy. Stay we ever. rolled out. <laughs> So one thing that that I will do on really tight properties with those fixed blade heads. So I I love the Grizz Trick Two, and I like the the um, Day Six head with the three quarter inch bleeder. So like the yeah. original one because it's basically a Viper Trick. It's mm-hmm. the same size as a Viper Trick, but it's solid. Uh, it's a I, solid head. Oh yeah, and so I'll take that head and I will shoot that deer. In like the bottom of the heart, like right in front of the legs, <laughs> either the front or the rear. That's up to the hinge. <laughs> but but I'll try to like take that landing gear out and like bust everything up so that they are snow plowing out mm-hmm. of there instead of like running <laughs> on all four legs. I mean, I, I still just aim for the top of the heart. You know, lung, heart lung area. I'm always aiming yeah. for right there. Well, and that, and that gets that snowplow effect also. When you take out those front, the muscles in the front legs, especially with a bigger broadhead, yeah, they it's the bloody snowplow. Yeah, yeah, it's perfect. Bloody sleigh ride. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Trademarked. <laughs> Brought to you by Bloody Sleigh Ride. <laughs> that started in the sorority house. And... Yeah, it's similar to the Angry Dragon. 
<laughs> or the chili dog. Would you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to stop there instead of saying pink sock. A wizard sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Age-old question. Best equipment methods to keep our hands and feet comfortable? Heat, man. Like, the, I think having leather boots, lace-up boots, unless the, the area you're hunting in requires it, like it's super wet, muddy, like mm-hmm. the shore, floodplain spots. Um, it, and when you say leather, it's not always full leather. It yeah. could be, you know, like... Just a lace-up boot. I think a lace-up boot holds more air in, obviously. It allows more... Uh, of your you know perspiration to evaporate through yep um the other thing is if you can like on our platforms on one of my platforms i've used uh camiform tape on the whole thing yeah to keep separation and that's where that that carbon fiber stand from tethered is way it, yeah like really helps is in the fact that there's like a What's it? Thermal property there mm-hmm. that it's not cold metal that you're standing on. That does just it robs your feet of heat. I find that the lace up boots tend to have like a stiffer sole, mm-hmm. and they they work better when you're standing on the edge of your platform. Mm-hmm. You know, as opposed if you have that rubber sole, it's soft and it kind of caves over, and so you're you have to hold your feet up more yeah. instead of letting it bend down. I, I've um, also I've talked to people who use those. Um, <laughs> Excuse me, COVID. <laughs> Use the the battery operated heating so- heated socks. Yeah, and they don't like them because they get too hot, and their feet sweat. Yeah. Oh, and also like keeping your core warm yeah. is super important because that blood should be flowing. Uh, and then uh, same thing is I, we all wear really thin gloves or no gloves, which yeah, is why I, my fingers are always cracked. On the I tip. don't. I usually don't wear gloves because you're a manimal. Uh, but I have my hands in my pockets or in my pants <laughs> all the time, Just playing with the playground. But I love you know first light's ability to use that pass through yep. to put your hands in. But the core, I like the hand muff. Yeah, the hand muff is pretty with silly a, with a hand warmer you know, in there. I, but I usually, I, I mean. I, I don't worry about my hands very much. I will also pull my hands into my sleeves. Yeah. You know, and... Like a know. third grader. Yeah. But I definitely don't... Uh, I mean, I'll wear gloves, but my favorite types of gloves are the ones that... They're basically mittens, but then you can fold back the mitten and you're fingerless. <laughs> you have fingerless gloves under them. I like those, but I don't really wear them very often. I don't yeah. care how cold it is. I just like those fingerless ones. I, I really... I like to feel the tip of my fingers. If I'm going to wear gloves, yeah. I wear the wool fingerless gloves that, you know, the first light one. It's funny. I take those first light ones, I cut the fingers off of them, <laughs> the thumb and the pointer finger, and they're like $100 gloves. And I'm like, oh, read them right out of the package. Snip, snip. <laughs> and then this is DIY. Yeah, yeah exactly. I DIY'd the, uh, the rubber tote in the back of my truck. I drilled two little holes through it and hung some paracord on it so I could hang my kill kit in my stick. You're all there. about the paracord. I'll, you dude, put I'll, paracord on everything. Paracord everywhere. Paracord everything. That should be my YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> this is the paracord necklace I made. <laughs> it took me eight hours to braid. This is the square knot. No, I was just going to do one strand and put a square knot in the back. <laughs> like and subscribe. Thanks for watching my channel. <laughs> <laughs> Fastest braid you can ever do. They braided it for you. Just tie a square knot. <laughs> Make sure to burn the edges. <laughs> um, yeah. How to handle trespassers during a hunt. Uh, get down and shoot, tell that mofo, first. get out of here. Yeah. I haven't had too many. Uh, one, I had rifle hunting in a boat-only <laughs> area. And he's bebopping through, hip-hopping, you know. And he gets under me. Doesn't know I'm there. And I went... <clears throat> He's looking around like, you know, he's side to side. <clears throat> he's still looking around like, where are you? I said, look up. <laughs> he looked, I said, you're not supposed to be here. Yeah. And this is a bow only area. He's like, well, yeah, I'm, I see, I'm, I'm looking for a deer. My, my property's right here. I, I think I'm on my property. I said, dude, you know you're not. Yeah. You're way off your property. Yeah, you here, bro. So I yeah. said, I can call the CPO. We can let the... The law figure the out law. where that property line is. Law don't go around here. <laughs> Savvy. <laughs> um, yeah, I I don't like trespassers, man. Yeah, especially when they're 
wearing a nighty walking through the turkey property. I mean, look, it it does happen. It doesn't matter where you are. You're you're probably going to get trespassers and and cameras are a big one. Cell cameras. I love it for trespassers because Hell you yeah. get it right now. Dude, I'll right hang away. a cell camera. I, I love hanging a cell camera on like the gate or where somebody would park or an access to a property. I mean, I, I use cell cameras I'd say thirty to maybe even fifty percent of the time more for knowing when people are in there. I mm-hmm. hate like when we go to a spot, we're trying to be as efficient as possible to kill something. I'm not trying to waste my time and mm-hmm. I'm picking a spot based on Intel and the last thing I want to do is go to a spot and figure out that somebody else has been in there and screwed it up, whether it be a hunter trespassing. We get a lot of people just randomly trespassing through. We have mm-hmm. one property. Especially a lot of kids. I mean, these are neighborhoods that we're in. So <clears throat> we get kids and we get landscapers just bebopping through the woods. Yeah, taking a dump. Taking a dump in the woods. Yeah. Apparently, it's like just an unknown thing. And I never thought about it until like, well, they're in the truck all day. They don't have a bathroom. But like, how many times oh. have we had some dude? I've seen them do it. Yes. This, to, to, uh, earlier this season, I had a guy come in and I'm like, I heard crunch, crunch, crunch. I had my bow and I like slowly turned around and I see this dude and he's like jiggling his belt. I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, you're upwind. Yeah. No, 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 no. no. Oh God. Is that a taquito? <laughs> Yeah, it's disgusting, man. And I, I don't know. But it I does people, give us. Yeah, people just like wander, man. Like they do, they especially do in not these respect residential property areas. Lines like a homeowner, guy. it's different, or a hunter. Yeah, and or in like farm rural land. Yeah, you know, people are more protective of their of their property lines. But it almost seems like, wow, this is a common area. No, there are actual property lines here. Yeah, it's not common just because there's no house there and there's woods. And it's it's an it's kind of amazing how few property owners know like where their actual property line is because they're not maintaining that chunk of woods they never go there yeah that's why the deer are there yeah but they'll be like oh yeah my property ends right here and i'm like actually it doesn't it goes like another hundred yards that way you know or or maybe they'll tell you the opposite of that. Oh, yeah. Like, we own all that. And you're yeah. like, You can uh, hunt all these woods. Well, actually, I can't. Yeah. That's the HOA's property. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you have to be careful. And that's where, you know, using apps that have property lines on them, like Spartan Forge. Yeah, they're crucial. They're, they're absolutely they're imperative. Crucial. They're crucial. Um, yeah. I was going to tell you, yesterday, I was uh, walking out of a store, and a very nice old lady was walking out of the nail salon next to where I was grabbing a sandwich at, like, Jimmy John's. And um, she was like, oh, I see your hat there. Are you a hunter? I had, like, a camo crispy mm-hmm. hat. I don't know what hat I'm wearing right now. Uh, I had a hat that had, like, a camo front on it. And I was like, yeah, sure I am. Like, how's it going? And um, she's like, well, I own 378 acres right down the street. We got tons of deer on it. I was like, really? <laughs> like, do you like deer meat? She's like, I love deer meat. I was like, Do you want to get married? Yeah. <laughs> I love you, mama. <laughs> Emily, it's over. I found my true love. Yeah. So um, she gave me her phone number in a non weird way. Mm-hmm. And I sent her a text and she responded. She re- and she's like 80. Yeah. We locked up 371 acres in oh, about 22 minutes west. Are you of here. serious? Yeah. And she's like, now I have cattle, so you can't gun hunt it. I was like, no problem. Oh, no problem. Yeah. No problem. But... Well, this crossbow is basically a gun. Yeah, this <laughs> here shoots 558 feet a second, ma'am. <laughs> That's the biggest deer I ever shot. That's a cow. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that all from just talking to a really nice old lady who was walking out of the nail salon with a back brace on. Uh, let's see. When do you go scouting? After, during, or preseason? I am always scouting. Always. I'm always trying to pay attention and adjust. But my favorite time of year is right now. Right, middle of the yeah. winter. Yeah, you know when the season's ending or has ended. It's so easy to see season. beds, see sign. Um, I love getting out after a fresh snow. Also, mm-hmm. that's like cheating, and I'll I'll put markers down is like where I'm seeing heavy crossing. No, it can it can be a little bit deceiving. So. When, when you do get a fresh snow, because you see all these tracks, you're like, oh, this is the heavy trail. But that also could be the heavy trail in the middle of winter when it's snowing, not necessarily in the early season. Exactly. But it does give you a great idea of where their core areas are. 
Do platforms need slip resistant texture like bed liner, spray, paracord? Are they good? The the tethered platform is ro- ready to rock. Yeah. Um, there's yeah. a ton of traction cut into it. This person said, does hunting in a saddle increase your sexiness? It seems to be a correlation with you. Thank you. Um, I would say yes. I'm a bear. <laughs> I get a lot of uh, inappropriate DMs. Uh, yeah, because you send them also. <laughs> <laughs> oh, th- those are actually replies, Tanner. <laughs> um, what are some of the inappropriate ones? Mostly pictures of cranks. <laughs> I respond with a number. <laughs> You're rating them? Like a Scoville rating scale. <laughs> I'll be like three lacks creativity. <laughs> Block <laughs> three hundred thousand. That's a habanero. <laughs> uh, you should give him a Richter scale. Really. <laughs> that rocked my world. <laughs> oh, earth shattering. Oh boy. Oh, uh, man. A very prominent figure whose father was president responded. How to pee out of a saddle with a camera guy if you have a shy bladder. (laughs) It depends on your gift from God. Um, If you are enabled, just hang it out, let it fly. Just turn to the side and let it go. But if you have to turn all the way and then face down because (laughs) because it more sprays than than, than squirts. One of our camera guys uh, told me that... (laughs) <laughs> that he often saw somebody that he was filming just streaming porn on his phone during a hunt. Probably was one of us. <laughs> <laughs> not streaming it. That's downloaded, homie. <laughs> I don't have great service here. I just downloaded yeah, it onto my phone. Gotta, gotta save these <laughs> for offline use. This is the phone that I use for normal communication. This is the phone I use in the tree stand. <laughs> it's a little crusty. I don't need a wrap on it. California potato chips. Yeah. <laughs> it's easy to pee out of the saddle. I pee out of the saddle all the time. Yeah. Just just turn around and let it go. Yeah, I just kind of turn to the side and lean and yeah. let it rip. Try not to pee on my steps below me. <laughs> it, it's a two-handed operation. I have to hold my belly up. I have to fish around in all my layers. <laughs> Pull a little the worst, hook out. The worst is when it's really cold out and you've got a ton of clothes on. Yeah. And but, the, the the flaps never line up. Like, they're always, no. it's like one side, another side, another side. So I just pull the elastic. Yeah, down. see, I, I've i changed up my technique. When I've got bibs, I always wear bibs when it's cold. So now what I do is I reach my hands inside my bibs. I don't try to reach from the outside in. Unzip, unzip, unzip. This is a pro move here, I think. Yeah, I reach inside my bib so then I'm at, at my mid layer of clothing, and then I undo from there and then go out. That's smart. Yeah, it works out. Wicked smart, kid. Wicked smart, and it's you less like peel, apples? less peel in my hands and my <laughs> the clothes. Worst. And- the worst is when, when you fish it out, <laughs> you start peeing and you feel heat. <laughs> yeah, because You're there's. Like, no, 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 no. It's like it's like something is hanging down, like like a, a piece of your shirt is like, or a strap. Or the worst though is when your tether is hanging down, and you're like, oh yeah, I'm good to go. And you whip it out, and all of a sudden you see your pee stream go. It, it, it's shooting straight, and then all of a sudden it goes, tink, sticky tink, wicket, tink. Yeah, yeah, that, and it's it really does soak up pee. Tether oh, fast. <laughs> it's like a wick. Have you ever had to deal with a game warden after a neighbor called on you? No. Um, Police, but not game wardens. Yeah. So our area, we have like one game warden for four counties: Arlington, yeah. Fairfax, Loudon. Um, so we very rarely. No, we call them more yeah. often than than they're called on us, and it's usually for track and retrieve permission. Um, but no, police. We definitely get called. Uh, get called on um and the police come and most of the time except for the occasional exception they usually stay at their vehicle and they just yell to us and tell us to come out and they check are, check our stuff they love and, doing that yeah get out here i'm like okay i'll be out in two to three hours <laughs> <laughs> do you have an hour you can't find me <laughs> <laughs> but usually they're like look sorry you know i, I 
sorry I interrupted your hunt, but you know, got call, got a call, got a check. They check everything's good, and then we say, "Well, time to go home because now this hunt's ruined." I got two more. We got a lot, but we're gonna have to wrap this up. What's your ideal saddle height to hunt from? We've touched on this before. It's cover. It's not height. Exactly. It's cover. Boom. You know, Josh was talking about. Josh was on a podcast last night, and he was telling the guy that he's killed deer with one stick. You know, at the at the meat factory in the kill tree, it's like a it's it's actually a group of persimmon trees, um, and there's one persimmon tree in the center. He only uses like two or two sticks, I think, to get up in that tree because it's like an umbrella around him. So it's cover, cover, cover. It's not height. Yep. Yeah. the The key is to break up your outline. I like to be as low as possible to do that, though. Sure. I mean, I, I, I think a lot of people. I think there are two things. One, I think people often overestimate how high they're hunting. Mm-hmm. You know, and and people think there's like this weird like machismo thing, like oh, I shot this deer at thirty eight feet. It's like cool, dude. Why? Why? You just you know? reduced your, you know, your effective. I guess the kill zone. You know, uh, I would rather hit them perfectly on the same level as me yeah. you have a better chance of getting both lungs, yeah or just like slight angle like we get that little you know, lower hole but if my feet are at anywhere from 15 to 18 feet in the air i think that's kind of like my sweet spot it's perfect if my feet are at 20 feet you know that's okay if my feet are any higher than that i don't i don't see the need yep unless you're in some bo- somewhere where the topo is changing Different. so drastically yeah. that that you have to be but yeah i mean you need to get to where the cover is and get to where you're at an advantage. And after that, and stop you, climbing. And if you don't have cover, like if it's just all, whoa, cleaning ladies are getting a little rough up there. <laughs> they, um, they rip my shower handle off every time they're here. Two nights ago, I said, F this, I'm fixing this. I took a tube of JB Weld. And JB welded that bitch on. <laughs> if they rip it off again, I'm in trouble. Though I actually realized that after I JB welded it on there, I was like, "If this comes off, how how can I put it back on?" Well, JB weld, yeah, duct JB tape again. A little duct tape. Our cleaning ladies, and we tell them all the time. This is like the most Even white privilege Espanol, conversation it ever. <laughs> it, it is terrible. But they take when they take the trash out, they go and put it. And I've got this like fenced in area where the trash cans are, and they will. Like, just set it in there or set it next to the area instead of putting it in the trash cans. They're, just, they're like, just put them in. You're right there. So then as soon as they leave, the dogs go over and they're like, yeah. Oh. And then they just tear the trash out. Oh my God. Which is why we do not leave gut piles in the woods on small properties oh, where they have little dogs. My dad is texting me about uh, how to reset his iPhone. He got it in some, like, visually impaired setting. Dude, I'm not in the IT department. Come on. <laughs> Text your second favorite son. <laughs> um, my wife said, how does your spouse view your hunting habits? We get it. Mm-hmm. How do they view it? Well, mine views my hunting habits as... an addiction? As- Yes, an obsession. And actually, she, she really does view it like this. You love everything else more than you love me. <laughs> Guilty. That's, that's what she, that's how she views it. Yeah. Oh, my, my spouse is supportive, but I think that's because she knows. You she, would rather be in a tree than with me right now. I just love being in a tree. Yeah. Ha, have you ever gotten you to the, the point where you've, you, you are tired of it? No. Neither have I. I I am one of those people who I take pleasure in being alone. <laughs> yeah, but like that. really, I, I I think it's meditative. It is. It is. And I, I my favorite time of the day is when I'm driving because I I drive a lot. Driving to work or driving to a tree, that's my favorite time because I don't have the radio on. I don't have podcasts going. I'm not watching porn usually yet while I'm driving. <laughs> But um, I think, and I just, I, I don't know, my brain's always 100 miles an hour, at, whether it's work or hunting or, or family life or whatever. Um, when I do listen to things, it's usually podcasts. Yeah. Mine on repeat. 
<laughs> and, and just your microphone. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I don't yeah. want to hear you. You tune me out. It's special. I always wondered why you wanted those edits of it, just you talking. Well, I also la, like la, the la, ones. La, 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 la. I also like the ones where you you were the only one talking, so then I can pretend I'm doing it again. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, damn it, I should have said that. That would have been way funnier. But then I catch myself interrupting you. And then you don't stop talking because you can't hear me. <laughs> <laughs> Those are like, we, you know, we used to do this podcast not in person. And um, that ended when Billy fell asleep during one of our podcasts. More like passed out. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'm so sorry. Those IPAs were really strong. <laughs> Dude, I didn't realize. My buddy Gene gave me an IPA and it was 19%. 19%. <laughs> That's liquor. That's liquor. <laughs> it's almost 40 proof liquor. It's straight liquor. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it should have cued me when I drank it and I went. <laughs> oh, I feel normal again. <laughs> I shouldn't have put this in my cereal. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, what do you have going on the uh, upcoming week for the, hunting wise? What, well, are you what are you prepping on? What are we doing? This weekend is my daughter Hadley's birthday. That's actually on Saturday, and it's going to extend into Sunday. So you're only going to hunt the morning? <laughs> no, I'm actually not going to hunt Saturday and Sunday. I, I'm picking up my niece so they can hang out, cousins hanging out all weekend. So I'll be playing the making breakfast, taking kids to oh places. God, you have to be a dad this weekend. Don't! <laughs> <laughs> oh man, can't we just have lunch? Guys, sleep in until noon. Who are you? Yeah, but no, next week. Um, next week is going to be a pretty exciting week, though. Um, we're going to prep for the primitive season in Maryland. Nice. So they have that, you know, side, side lock, yeah. flint lock, or traditional archery. Um, and we're going to go down and um, see if we can kill a stag down there. I'm so just going to keep whacking and stacking with the crossbow here in the burbs. Yeah, I, I'm probably I'm probably only going to hunt one or two mornings next week because I'll be with work, plus I'll be driving three hours to the eastern shore. So I've got to – I kind of have to balance that because the following week and it is that primitive season, and it's dead center middle of the week. So I, I'm kind of prepping for that because nice. that, that one big stag samurai, he's back. Well – you better have a story for us next week. Well, I hope so. It might be, well, I got drunk, fell in the water. <laughs> oh, I'm drinking 19% IPA. <laughs> Crash my truck. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys for listening to the uh, to the five questions, which is uh, turned into about 15. But the uh, top questions of the week, keep them coming in. We love answering questions that you guys have. And um, thanks for listening. Thanks, guys. <laughs>